Welcome, White Lightning agents, to another episode of Counterintelligence. I am Kyle. That's I'm JP. P. I'm Ethan. Ethan. Yeah. This week's topic, suggested by L for Light, is the Uncanny Valley. We're actually using your suggestions this time, guys. <laughs> We're going to try to keep doing that. Um, for those of you who aren't aware, the Uncanny Valley is the sensation of something being almost human but not quite. So it's like like when you see a robot or a 3D animated person and it's like getting closer and closer to being a person, but then it reaches this point right before it's photorealistic where it's like, dear God, that's the most horrifying thing I've ever seen because <laughs> it looks kind of like a person, but not quite enough. So basically like everything Japan makes. <laughs> Alright, we have constructed a fake bomb this time because uh, we still don't know where the bomb from last time is, which is fine, I'm sure. I guess yeah. you're going first because you're holding it. I probably would have noticed if, uh, you know, the other bomb did anything, so we should be okay. Yeah, no, nothing was blown up when we got here, so I'm sure it's fine. Alright, you ready? Yes, sir. Starting the timer. Oh, no. Okay. Robot. Okay, um, it's the thing that they use to make stuff in movies that you, they can't actually make in real life. CGI? Yeah. <clears throat> it's something unsettling. It is, in fact, probably a word used in the definition of unsettling. It's, uh... Creepy. Oh, hey. This is the uh, psychoanalyst who you referenced in one of your three... Freud. Yeah. Freud has to do with any of this. Okay, um, what? Oh. You can have... Uh, oh, no! <laughs> Just like last time. <laughs> Go. It's when you can feel what someone else is feeling. Empathy. Um, okay, so when things happen a certain way more than once, you can call it a... a pattern? Okay, and when you realize that that's happening. A recognized pattern? A sequence? There, no, this is the same ones you just said, but in a different order. Uh, pattern recognition? Yeah! Okay. It's uh, when something that is fake looks as if it is real. Um, artificial, uh, simulated, uh... It was photorealism. Photorealism. That's okay. I blew up though. I win! So here's how it's gonna go. I've prepared three dossiers, each with three facts about the topic at hand. Each one of you is assigned a dossier and you will take a look at it and memorize it. You have one minute to do that. Doesn't matter the order this time, but you gotta know what's in there. Except one of you will only have two facts. And instead be the double agent. You have to make up your third fact. Because you see, after you've all gone around and memorized, you have to present your three facts to your teammates. So if you happen to be, for some reason, trying to pass off a completely fake fact, you better do it convincingly. All right, so what I learned about the Uncanny Valley is one, that people expect more out of their electronics the more that they look like people. So humanoid looking things, people just naturally expect them to be able to do more the things that look like a toaster. Um, also, that the uncanny valley sensation is technically, it's like a bug in human programming. So it, it, it that, that makes people see, it's like they, it's, it's a bug in pattern recognition. So they see it as being human and not human at the same time. And so that difference is what makes you feel weird about what you're looking at. Mm. And then, also, um, some researchers believe that our ability to detect what the, the subtle differences that uh, give us the uncanny valley feeling 
will increase at the rate that we're able to fix those differences and that we'll hit something called the uncanny wall where we can't actually get past it and we'll still be able to recognize that they're not humans. One was that uh, the movie Toy Story, the reason that they were toys, the main characters besides obviously the family, was because they were trying to avoid the uncanny valley itself by making them, you know, more plasticky and more, you know, dramatic figures like Buzz Lightyear, he was obviously a weird spaceman and Woody, he was a cowboy and, you know, the reason that they did that was so that they could avoid the Uncanny Valley, because CGI technology at that time hasn't really, hadn't really advanced to the point in which they can make very realistic looking people. That's why, you know, I remember, I, this is probably either Toy Story 2 or 1, the little baby was just horrifying. Do you remember the little girl oh, baby the, with the afro? Kind of, vaguely. Just like the creepy... I remember the baby on the spider. Is no, 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 Are you talking it about was, a human it baby? It was a human, yeah, one of the humans. Oh, okay. I don't know. I don't really remember it, um, but... Yeah. The second thing I learned, which is not pop culture, but is equally horrifying, um, Sigmund Freud apparently relates the uncanniness that we, the uneasiness that we unfeel due to uncanniness is that of, has something to do with this symbolic castration. Well, sure. Freud so, said yeah, it. <laughs> that's, that's fun. And the third thing, back to pop culture, is... Uh, Wait, is there any elaboration on that point? No, or is that just that's, like one of those things Freud says? That's sometimes? one of those things that Freud says. We feel uneasy because we're oh, worried Freud. about you know, castration, apparently. Um, and the third one is back to pop culture. Apparently, uh, one of the reasons that the Polar Express wasn't as popular as it should have been is because it was horrifying, and they just hit the dead bottom of the uncanny valley. And, like... That was like where CGI technology was at that time, and every single character in that movie was just perfectly uncanny. I didn't find it horrifying. It I was. That movie. Go you need to look at it again. Go look at it again. <laughs> every character I've was terrifying. I've seen it semi recently. I, I, I enjoyed it. Like, the, the main character was terrifying, all his friends were terrifying, the train <clears throat> hobo with like the bean broth was terrifying. One of the theory was first proposed by the uh, organizer of the Japanese national robot building group or whatever that checks out in japan mm. um another thing i learned about the uncanny valley is that according to studies done on monkeys they are also sensitive to the monkey version of the uncanny valley mm. um and three um uh, is a theory that it is possible that the whole uncanny valley thing was evolved into us in order to help us um, prevent uh, genetic defects when we mate. Interesting. All right. So when you see the monkey version of the uncanny valley, like they can do the same thing, but with monkeys, not Correct. with people. Like mm -hmm. they, they can tell like that's not quite monkey enough. Yeah, they probably just gauge their reaction. <laughs> Something's like, wrong. Ah! I've seen a lot of monkeys. That's not a monkey. One of us is lying about one of the things that we said. Yeah. And to be quite honest with you, I'm not really sure who it is. Yeah, there's some <laughs> pretty good. Long is doing pretty good. My first assumption is that your Freud thing was kind of out of the blue. Honestly, I didn't like the fact, but it was presented to me. Do you? Was there? Was that all that was given to That's it? That's all that was given. There to wasn't me. any. There was a little more, but it was like it was how it's related to castration. In no, some that way. it just said like. Freud says, oh, we feel uneasy because something's uncanny because we're scared of being castrated. My final answer is the Toy Story fact. Toy no, Story now fact. see, I know the Toy Story fact is correct, actually. Do you? Yes, because as I've mentioned many times, I watch a lot of behind-the-scenes documentaries. Mm. I don't want to take back my final answer. And I, yeah, I, I'm actually, I'm saying that one's true <laughs> because I've, I remember hearing them say yeah, but what if that, that they came up with a bunch, the Pixar writers came up with a ton of ideas back when they first started yeah. coming up with all these movies. I remember and that. they went with Toy Story first because all the, all their characters looked like plastic. So they were like, well, let's make the movie about plastic people first. So if we don't have the technology to do the rest of the stuff. Oh, I just remember the little green guys. from like the. So the I know song. that one's true. Oh. No, not that one. What was your not third one again? My third one was about the Polar, Polar Express. Express. Polar no. Express. The I know the Polar Express is horrifying. The reason that it wasn't JP as disagrees, so maybe. I disagree that it's horrifying. Yeah. It's horrifying. It's so creepy. I um, think it was a successful I mean, movie too, so the reason that I kind of want to call BS it, on that. It could have been much more successful. The reason they say that it wasn't as successful is it, 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 it's not like Elf level successful. The reason that it isn't is because of the Uncanny Valley. I'm like half and half on your monkey one. I'm I, sure. I kind of believe the if that is a lie, it's a really clever lie. <laughs> <laughs> um, 
I think the Japan one checks out. Cause Japan usually checks out. And I, I but maybe I that's why you're lying about it. The last one. The <laughs> you last could throw one Japan into any of those, and I'd just buy it immediately. Or maybe <laughs> you just quickly said you have no idea who's lying because you're lying to, to get us off your back. It didn't turn us on each other. This. I kind of think JP's checks out. To be fair, um, I I believe the uh. Japan one. I believe the <clears> monkey <throat> one. Because, I mean, monkeys... What was your third one again? My third one was that it's possibly an evolutionary thing um, to prevent us from... Yeah, I remember researching that. Genetic deformities. So I believe believe all three of JPs, that's the thing. So it leaves yours, which I I cannot remember yours. (laughs) (laughs) Mine were um, that... uh, the researchers thinking that we'll 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 be able our ability to detect the uncanny valley will keep in pace with our ability to fix it, so that we won't actually uh, get to the point where we can th- like, make it perfect. I would call that one out, but that's like kind of believable. That's the thing. There's also that um, people develop it as a, or it's a bug in pattern recognition that we experience it because we recognize something as both human and not human at the same time, and then there's. Uh, the wall. I think I remember you saying fucking. No, that was wall. the first one. The uncanny wall is the 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 thing where we can't. Um. We where where we are adva- our our ability to recognize oh, okay. fake things is advancing as at a, as fast as our ability to fix them, and I am having trouble remembering my third one, which does not mean it's fake. Okay. Um, <laughs> I the bug thing sounds legit, but it also sounds like something you could have just yeah. kind of made up just now. See, I really want to go with your Ford one, but I'm pretty sure you'd come up with something better than that. It's actually yeah, my I'm, main hanging up no, point. I, I, that sounds I'm, too I'm out like of the 90% blue. I'm percent sure it's not the Freud thing. It, if, if you're lying, oh, it's God. the Polar Express. You just really like the Polar Express, and you're like, <laughs> I love that movie. <laughs> no, guys, it's not, it's not that bad. Uh, if you're lying, I think it's the Who's lying, thing. and what was my third thing? <laughs> Um, I, just, I want to go with your bug one though, because I don't. That one's like kind of just like it sounds like Kyle talk. We're gonna need to lock in our answers soon. Yeah, it's true. All right, I'm gonna. Ah, <clears throat> uh, this is actually harder than I thought. I thought it was gonna be really easy to pick out who was lying, and I thought it was gonna be easy, and it was gonna be you, because I don't think you're as good at lying. <laughs> but maybe I'll be wrong. I'm going with your monkey one. <laughs> I'm respectfully going with the monkey one and saying that you made that one up. Okay. That's my answer. What's yours? I'm going with the Polar Express. Oh, I'm saying you made I'm that. I'm gonna up. go with uh, your bug. The bug one. All right. That just sounds weird. Who was it? It was the Polar Express. Wait, what? Oh! Yeah, what? Oh! <laughs> oh! Wait, what? Say it again. How did you phrase it? People say that uh, the reason that the Polar Express wasn't as popular as it should have been... It was as popular as it should have been. That's why I know. ...is because of the Uncanny Valley affected it so harshly due to CGI technology not being that advanced and all the characters looking terrifying. Okay, so your, your, your lie was that it wasn't as successful as it should have been because mm-hmm. of that. You're yep. still wrong. It's creepy as hell. <laughs> all right, well... Leave your suggestions for topics in the comments because we're actually using those now. So we're adding them to a list and then Agent Con picks one each week to send us our information. So please leave us some topics. Um, let us know what you think of each of the games and suggest any new games. If you have an idea for something that would be fun, leave those in the comments as well. And leave us some questions that we can read off in the community comment at the end of the show. Uh, and we'll see you all next weekend. And if this is happening next week. And this is happening while I'm in Ireland, uh, you should come hang out at some point and, and that'll be cool. So yeah, that's it. You guys have anything else or is that, is that the end of the show? That's it. Okay, bye. This video went on self-destruct. Bye. <laughs>